fan, but one thing is for sure, when you have two bulldozers who will block for you and knock down Show's anything in their path. Take over, right? The funny thing is, this is where it all started. And I know, I know you are back there. You are watching this. You can see everything. So I am calling your ass out. Right now, Triple H. Come on, let's do this thing. You think I'm playing around? This is not a game. You took my life from me. Now you get out of here. I'm not leaving this ring until you come out of here and make me. Everybody, welcome to the show. Ringtime Pro Wrestling is at it again. Keith and Keisha are in the building. Keisha, I will introduce you to the people. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ringtime Pro Wrestling's Crown Jewel Duo of the Year. I mean, I'm just saying, we're just awesome. I mean, we are awesome. It's February, and I don't even care. I'm just saying. This is just how I'm going to bring it in tonight because we're just greatness. Like, Keith, do you agree? I mean, I can just, just, yeah. feel, I can just feel it. We are here. Uh, we are two weeks into the Trump presidency. Uh, we are still oh, on boy. the air. We have not been banned because I'm glad we ain't subject to FCC regulations because I can imagine some threats that would be coming. Um, I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it could go down. But other than that, we are here. We are ready to have some fun. It is the second day of February. It is Groundhog Day. It is also the second day of Black History Month. Um, That's right. During this show, we will talk about a little black history as it relates to the world of professional wrestling and also something that's being worked on for the Ringtime Pro Wrestling site. Uh, but we're here to talk about the big weekend last week, right? NXT TakeOver. Royal Rumble, Keish, this company took about nine extra hours of wrestling, nine extra right. hours of my life, mm-hmm. and I'm not mad, but I'm Kinda confused. A little bit. You know, and you know, I've tried to be better. Like I'm trying to, like, look, I will let the process play out, and that's something I need to just repeat in the mirror. I will let the process play out. I will let yeah, the process play that. out. But, man, I mean, you see the Royal Rumble winner. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with that? Um, right. I thought the Royal Rumble was excellent until we got to the Royal Rumble, right? <laughs> and then when we got to the Royal Rumble match, the first 20 guys that come into the ring, I'm like, oh, man. Like... Jericho lasted, he's the first guy in the ring, and he lasts 60 minutes. Doesn't win. And we'll go into the actual match. But, like, the first people after him, it's like, it's so uncompelling. Like, Braun comes in and wrecks shop, and then he's out. Corbin, I thought, looked good. But after that, it's like, man, these dudes are so random. Oh, exactly. I, I give Sammy Zayn credit. What's again? Throughout a lot of these dudes, very random throughout this match, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, then when you got to twenty up, that's when the names start coming. But when I'm doing the countdown, I'm like, "Well, they ain't gonna lead a room for nobody. That ain't gonna lead a room for nobody." There was no surprise entrances. Which, sorry, you can't do something over and over again and then us not get accustomed. We want our surprises. 
That's how we get our pops. Second, right. let me tell you something. Vince has committed to this Roman Reigns. He says, "This I am sending you this Roman Reigns. You will like this Roman Reigns, and you will take this Roman Reigns." It, I, I feel like a little kid forced to eat my broccoli when it comes yeah. to Roman Reigns. That's, that's pretty what, much how that feels. That, that's what I feel like is going on here. But we're gonna go back to, we're gonna take this thing all the way in reverse and bring it back up to today, and we're gonna talk about everything in between. So let's start with Takeover. If you heard the opening promo that kicked off this show, hey man, takeover starts with a bang. And it is hard for takeover not to steal the show every weekend that they do a dual show with the main roster. It's very hard. And they find a way to at least leave you wondering, are they going to be able to top that the next night? Right. Right. Um, and I mean, depend on how you grade this thing. You could say so, take over one. I'm not gonna say take over one, but I'm gonna take over. Had a good showing. Rollins coming out to kick off the show, calling out Triple H. Triple H coming out, sending down the goons. It was it was good entertainment. I was prepped. Now, of course, due to recent events, we don't know what's going to happen there. But how how did you like to open the show, Keish? You mean takeovers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like as a total? Oh. I mean, just just a quick overview. We we'll go. We're gonna go match by match. We're gonna pick this thing apart um, like we always do. Takeover was completely awesome. Uh. The, uh, I was I was so mad with the women's fatal four way and we'll I'll explain that when we go over it. Um definitely happy with the beginning. Uh I was way too excited about Seth Rollins um interrupting the entire show, of course. I thought Everybody's in it. You know what makes Takeover? One thing that makes Takeover so awesome is the crowd. Like Takeover, like NXT fans are everything. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I don't know if people realize it or not, but if you watching uh, when you're watching Takeover, like you're not just watching the wrestlers. Like you're watching the crowd too, because their fans are greatness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I definitely I'm a fan <laughs> of all of it, but yeah. And Takeover as a whole to me just got like an A plus as usual. Yeah. So I was way too excited to see all of it. Yeah. When you're dealing with an NXT crowd, this is what you'll remember. Most of those are diehards, right? Like the NXT crowd I think you can more relate to us. Like they have a work. They're a very smart crowd. They have a good working knowledge of everybody, and it's not just WWE. Like, so they're gonna pop if a if a guy from TNA shows up, if a guy from ROH shows up, if some guy from New Japan shows up. They're gonna give that pop. They like, oh wow, I know something special's going on right now. You know what I'm saying? So that's happening. They're watching. They watch every week. You know what I mean? Like this is. I don't know if there's a casual NXT fan, if that's a such thing to say. Um, yeah. Because first of all, if you watch NXT, you probably got the network. I mean, don't get me wrong. You might just be a Hulu person and love your Hulu. And I think it was smart for them to keep it on Hulu. Um, so every I think week, it was too. Even if you're not a network subscriber, you still got access to NXT, and that might entice you to get the network. You know what I'm saying? Just like, hey, this thing may go away. But I think because Hulu is NBC Universal, and that's part of the TV deal, it's gonna stick for a minute, right? Um, and that's where it's all where it all started. So I don't think they want to turn turn that away anyway, because you got to remember NXT existed as FCW for years. Oh Hulu, and then right. 
it comes as NXT, and then the network comes, and then it's like, well, now we can do this thing. So, I appreciate what the brand has become, because now it's a, it, a fully functional standalone brand. Um, and they they're, they're going to survive talent raids from their own company because to suit the company's needs, they're going to pluck talent, right? Of course. Like, that's going to happen. But they still lock and load, and they still find a way back. And look at where we at. Look at who we got out there. So, I mean, to open the match, Eric Young, TNA legend, long-time guy, former Shark Boy, former leader of the World Elite. Mm Mm-hmm. Is now kicking it with his own faction over in NXT Sanity. Um, they kind of rem- it's easy to compare them to the Wyatts because they gruffy and they all got beards. But here's the thing: I, all due respect to Bray Wyatt, Eric Young is a good cult leader. Yeah, I mean, yes, he is. EY does that thing, man. Now, one of the things that's interesting to have at EY here is kind of like, you remember when they was trying to, when TNA was trying to make him Daniel Bryan, while WWE had Daniel Bryan off and kicking it? Oh my God, it was awful. It was the most horrific thing I've ever seen. Like, I swear it was. It was a weird thing because what I'll say for TNA is that they were booking Eric Young better than the WWE was booking Daniel Bryan, though. Because EY was standing up to all the competition and slaying the Dragons. Daniel Bryan was sitting up there running scared, and then he would finally, you know, he would he would hold up and have the match. But I don't know, it just wasn't working out. I, I, didn't, I didn't like how he got pushed after he won the title. Like, I thought it was just like, oh, y'all yeah, trying to make this dude kind of scared. Then y'all kept having to get jumped, beat up. Then it was like, oh, he's injured. It's like, shit, I see why. But Right. Um, neither here nor there. Solid, solid takeover debut for Eric Young. Um, Keish, is Ty Dillinger ever going to win a match? He needs to. I, I, I mean, I love Ty Dillinger. So to see him, like, take these L's, is very, very, very challenging. Um, yeah, I hope thing. that he wins very wins one at least very, very soon because I can't deal with it, man. I just can't. The crowd love him, and it's like watching Ty Ziggler. Yeah, if you catch what exactly. I'm saying. Like mm-hmm. he, I'm like every takeover, he is here and open the match, the perfect ten. Everybody cheered, everybody up, and then he gets his ass whooped. And I'm like, wow. Didn't he lose the last takeover, the one before that? And the one before that? Yeah. Like, I don't have a win, like, in a recollection of the last, like, six of these. Oh, and despite what Road Dog may say, wins and losses matter. Sorry. That shit. Who, didn't, when it, did he say that? He said that did on Twitter. really t- say that? He said it on Twitter, right? Like a fan, he was responding to a fan, and he was trying to toe the company line and made himself look stupid. And yeah. sometimes you gotta, you gotta just not engage, right? If right. you are going to, I, like, I don't, I don't advocate saying stuff that's gonna make you lose your job, because I'm not about to do that either, right? <laughs> right. So, hey, man. Don't go out there talking stupid. But don't sit there and make yourself look stupid. Trying to defend the undefensible. This Twitter, man, you don't owe these people no response. You just sit back and be like, right. okay. That's right. it. Don't do nothing. They used to not get responded back to. Now, of course, then they'll start calling your names and stuff. But that's what people do on Twitter when you don't respond to them. That's what okay. the block. Right, because they're petty. That's what the block petty. button for. That's what petty people do. That's what the block button for. I don't call right. that petty. I call that childish. Now, as, as a petty expert and a person, there's a degree in pettyology. 
that is not petty. That is just childish, and you throwing a temper tantrum. Petty <laughs> is when somebody says that you don't know nothing about wrestling, and you tell them that look, I don't come to your job trying to kick dicks out your mouth. That's petty. Or I could have been your daddy, but I didn't have change for a dollar. That's petty. That's awful. I know petty. Like I said, pettyologists, petty pentagrass, related to petty white. <laughs> okay, I digress. But Road Dog said wins and losses didn't matter. He said, because they asked him about some things on SmackDown and how people get buried and all that. He said, since it's scripted, that, you know, it's all fake and it's not real competition and da 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 da. All right. Number one pet peeve for the WWF. First of all, they they pick and choose when they want to talk about this. Secondly, I I know it's not real, Keish. Right. I'm not Dave Wills. It ain't still real me, to me, damn it. But it's fiction, and like all my fiction, I have the same standard for my fiction as I do all of it. Just because it ain't real, don't mean you don't act like it. Exactly. And they stop acting like it. And that's why the shit has all the holes in the presentation that it has. Because they stop acting like it. First of all, him engaging somebody on Twitter, I get he's one of the lead writers on SmackDown. I'm not discrediting anything Road Dog has to say about the business. He is an Armstrong. But guess what? As Jim Cornette said on his podcast, he didn't learn this shit from Bullet Bob talking like that. Because the, ma- the wins and losses matter to Bullet Bob. Mm-hmm. So, hey, don't be out here talking about the wins and losses don't really matter. Yeah, 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 they, yeah, they matter. Because that's how we determine the perception of who is on top. Right. That's how you get to the belt. That's how we determine if somebody should be. If somebody lost 10 matches in a row and you book him in a title match, Keish is not credible. Exactly. That's exactly how I feel. I mean, it, it just, it makes perfect sense to keep up with wins and losses. Yeah. Because even if you, even if you're somebody that's giving wrestling a chance for the first time for like a good two to three weeks, maybe even, a, I would say even a month, give it one month's time, 30 days, right? So you've been watching it for a month. And you've been keeping up with this person's track record, wins and losses. So then we get to a title match that they're booked in for like the end of the month. But you've been watching them since the beginning, and they haven't won a damn thing. And then all of a sudden, the first thing you're going to ask is, well, how the hell are you going to even win a title? How are they going to be in a title match and haven't won anything for this entire month that I've been watching them? Yeah. If someone that doesn't even watch wrestling can keep up with something like that, then imagine the avid wrestling fan. Imagine the, the normal, regular wrestling fan and how they feel when you set up someone like that. Wins and losses always count. And if you don't count wins and losses, then you won't even be able to build a face or a heel character. You wouldn't be able to build... Uh, a personality off of a person because they won't have anything to really kind of uh, help propel their character in any way, shape, or form. I can't be out here, you know, talking about how I'm the best and I don't win a damn thing. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Of course, everybody thinks they're the best, but when you prove it, it's a different story. You know, Dolph Ziggler right now is having the obstacle of trying to prove he's the best. Todd Dillinger is in the same situation. He's having the obstacle of proving that he's the best because, hell, he ain't won nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, going on and now I'm good enough and blah, blah, blah. When they had decided that Ty was going to sit here and fight for 
how he feels about his career and what he should do, it made perfect sense considering what was going on. Right. So, so of course, you know, that statement from Road Dog was just dumb. You know, please don't get me started on when people decide to tell you. Someone told me in past week to my face, they went on ahead into the whole wrestling and state conversation. And I instantly was pissed. Like, I felt myself get mad in two seconds because I was like, people, I'm so, I'm like, I'm gonna put, this is gonna be my little rant about this for the night. And I mean little because I'm gonna try and keep this as short as possible. Do not ever tell me wrestling is fake. I do not want to hear that shit. Like, period. I don't want to hear the word fake being associated with wrestling, and this is why. Because I understand, just like you do, that what am I? What I'm seeing has been already written out and predetermined and everything. Wrestling is scripted. I get that. Do not call it fake. You know what I'm saying? Your TV shows that you watch, they're scripted. This is acting. This is what these people do. I don't sit there and tell you why you shouldn't watch Law and Order SVU or How to Get Away with Murder or Grey's Anatomy or some BS like that. So don't tell me that I shouldn't watch wrestling because it's fake. This is be it is this and yes, they all go along the same damn lines. Because I don't tell you not to go see your favorite movies. Don't tell me to watch what one of my one of my favorite forms of entertainment. I don't have time for that. Like, we get it, I get it, you get it, we all understand it. Now, stop calling it, stop calling it fake. I don't want to hear that. Like, I just don't. I'm sorry. Like, I am the last person that you want to say that to. Like, I just, no. I digress. Like, I swear I can go on about that for, like, all night. But no, I'm, I'm bringing myself back right now. I am with you. Like... I am here. I'm just saying. So, here we go. Let's go back to TakeOver. But, yeah, I, I agree with you. Now, what I will say is this. The Wizard losses are less of an issue with people who have established themselves. Okay? John Cena can lose four matches in a row and still get booked in a world title match. It makes sense. So I don't, I don't want to go too far on, on that, but that that's I, okay. Back to Takeover. Roderick Strong made a good debut at Takeover. Um, he's been on the roster business for his big big event. He beat Andre Siano Lamas, who I think is more functional as a heel. I think he came over wrong. I think when um, you take a Mexican wrestler or somebody like that, I know sometimes they're ready to get out of that mask. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I think he could have used the mask and then maybe worked his way out of it. You know what I mean? Right. But, nah. But, all in all, good match. No problems there. Keith, we got new tag team champions. Oh, yeah, we do. The authors are paying... Uh, defeated DIY in a tag team title match. Uh, the authors of Pain are managed by legendary Hall of Famer Paul Ellering of Road Warriors fame. Who, hey man, I don't know if Paul got a time machine or what. Paul still looked the same as he did in 1984. I'm calling shenanigans on that. But other than that, hey man, he's these guys. Look legitimately scary. Yeah, they really do. Now I don't know how big they really are because they are they look jacked and huge, but th- part of me think, feel like they look a little small. Like okay, how like <sighs> the Ascension look big on oh, NXT, but when they got to the main roster, it didn't seem that big. Such a, oh, right. Somehow I got this feeling that when those guys go to the main roster, they're not going to look... Like, they might be wide, but not tall. And maybe that's the thing for me. They're not tall enough. But... Yeah. Aside from that, uh, good match. 
I thought DIY did enough to give you the illusion of, hey, we could have beat these guys. Just some things went wrong. Like, I think the authors of pain are getting better. Because one thing when you do, which we have a monster team, a lot of the early matches that they have, you're protecting them, especially if they aren't as good yet in the ring. Uh, this match showed they've come a long way, and they are a lot better. Now, because they're going to have to start wrestling more matches, more full, like the more depth matches to be a tag team champions, they even got a chance to get even better. But uh, I thought it was a solid performance by all teams involved, and that was a good look. Yeah. I think uh, so, too. I, I agree. Uh, on to the Fatal 4-Way. Asuka uh, successfully defended her title against Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, and Nikki Cross. Keish, you had some issues with the match. Okay, so here's the thing with this Fatal 4-Way, right? And I'm going to put it out there because this is just... I really seriously thought Asuka was going to lose her title tonight, that night. Not not to Peyton Royce or Billy Kay because, I mean, seriously, no. But... I really thought that Nikki Cross had her shot, you know? Personally, I feel like this fatal four-way should have never happened, and it should have just been Nikki Cross and Oscar just by themselves. Um, I really feel like Billy, Billy Kay and Peyton Roy shouldn't have even been involved, but I can understand putting them into the title picture considering um, they've probably been living with NXT for a while, you know, you, they get... It, it's, it's a quote-unquote deserved title shot. Now, my only issue with it was that I'm not really big fans of the two, so I'm a But at the same time, I understood it. Now, my thing that got me about the entire match was Mickey Cross just pretty much took out Oscar for a second, Right. But, of course, with it being a fatal four-way, you got to pay attention to three people and not just one. So that's how she ended up going through that table, and that's how I ended up pissed off for, like, a, for what I thought would be the rest of the night. But, you know, the rest of the takeover just kind of changed that for me. So, anyway, um, the match was awesome. To me, it was a little short, but it was greatness. Um, I actually was fine with it. Um, I wasn't too pleased with Peyton Royce's performance at first, but I think her and Billy Kay play well off of each other as far as working as a team. Um, I just really uh, wanted to see how this was going to go with, you know, this being every man for themselves. Well, every woman for themselves. Um uh, I thought Oscar did, a, of course, an incredible job, as usual. And I won't take anything away from her. It's it's not that I wanted her to lose. It's just that I really seriously thought title, the title was going to change hands this way, you know? But I really feel that in the future, it'll be a one-on-one match with her and Nikki Cross. So we we'll just have to see how this goes. But that's, that's pretty much... Uh, I was pleased, but then I kind of wasn't with the entire thing. Like, the match itself was, I don't know. There was just something, it wasn't really something right about the whole entire thing. I really wasn't supporting it from the beginning, being a fatal four-way, but, you know, there's nothing you really can do about that. So, (laughs) all you can do is watch and see and hope for the best with it, and that's what I did, but... It really got the expectation that I expected from it. Yeah, here's the thing. I think she could have this. This would have been a good opportunity for her to lose and still protect her. Right. You know, because it would make sense. But it would have made sense at the same time. uh, I mean, I I I don't mind my star being dangerous. Right. I don't mind my superstar. Being, um, like, yo, she's at a point now, like, she's in rarefied air. Like, they've done a lot with her in NXT, and they've made her, like, 
a dangerous champ that people have been scared to deal with. And I like what they've done with her. I don't know how this translates to the main roster. But when she does debut, she has to go for the title, right? Right. Like, whether it's Raw or SmackDown, she has to come for the champ. Like, she got to come for somebody's head. Because, I mean, it is what it is at this point, right? Like, she can't just come on and then, like, have to work her way up or wrestle, you know. No, there's, there. there's no way there's no way that you can put her in that position. Like, it really isn't. Like, there's no way you can just slide her into this, oh, well, we're just going to have her pay her dues and work her way up type situation. No. Because it just, it wouldn't work for her. Like, y'all could do that, but what's going to end up happening is you end up sucking her into the background. With and it, either you're gonna you're gonna try and suck her into the background, but it's never gonna happen. Or like you're gonna get like the worst crowd reactions that you've seen in a while when it comes to the women, because they're going people are going to hate it. Like we're sitting here t- talking about it. And I'm like, hell no. So imagine if this actually were to happen, you know? Right. That's a totally different situation. And that's not something that you even want to put yourself in a position of doing. So, yeah, when she she debuts on the main roster, like, she has to go straight for the gusto, like, no, no gifts. And I feel for whoever she faces in the ring, because I'm telling you, like, I'm not going to lie, Keith. Like, I, I would never... Never, I don't care how much you pay me, I would never get in the ring with that woman. Like, <laughs> like this is not happening. It's not. I'm sorry. Like, mm-mm. I'm like, nope. Um, I'm not equipped for that. So we're good. Like, no. We yeah. need to know you don't. You don't need me to do anything. <laughs> like, you have plenty of other women on this roster. Use one of them because it ain't happening. Like, yeah. Nah, I'm good. Um, going down. Uh, Bobby Roode uh defeated Shinsuke Nakamura for the NXT Championship. We got a new NXT champ. Um, geez, does Nakamura come to the main roster now? Ah, oh, I wanted to. I wanted to so bad, but oh my god, where would they put him? Well, they put him on Raw SmackDown. Like, uh, I, I don't know. I really just. Mm. I mean, with the Rollins injury, that kind of changes some things, right? Which we haven't talked about yet, but, uh, you know, kind of kind of some things. Um, but, yeah. With the Rollins injury, Keith, I don't know. I can't right. say if. Uh, that situation would would um put him on SmackDown. Well, I think it'll it definitely will snatch him up. I mean, on Raw to I'm be sorry. put on a main roster. Yeah, it'll snatch him up to be put on a main roster a lot faster than what it was originally planned. Um, it definitely leaves room for it. Um, don't know if it'll be exactly that, but you know, it's it's always the wonderful world of possibility that we can look at when it comes to these types of situations so we'll see how this goes but I'm telling you Keith I was looking forward to it I'm not going to lie like oh man it's it's going to get caught up ooh what if that happens like I was already excited but here's the thing he's probably not going to get caught up until after Wrestlemania like he'll probably have a rematch at TakeOver uh, or take over Orlando, which is going to mm-hmm. be nuts because right. it's take over it, the home of NXT. So you exactly. can imagine what that's going to be like. So, um, yeah, I can uh, imagine. That's what I need to be trying to go to. You know. It's funny. I, I, my goal is to go to WrestleMania 33. I, I need to just try and go to TakeOver, but 
I'm pretty sure diggers are kind of sold out for that too. I'm gonna look that up. I'm gonna see if I can find something for that. I mean, I, that weekend. Are you sure you can find realistic tickets for WrestleMania at this point? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, 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 I'm never trying to go to WrestleMania. I just want to go see the Takeover and then come home. <laughs> like, like, if I could just be in Orlando at the time, I don't know if I would want to do that because Orlando is expensive and it's going to be crowded. So I don't know. I'd probably just stay home watching on the network. You know, watching on somebody's big screen. Ultra HD TV or something, you know. Yeah, we'll yeah. see how this goes. That's kind of how it, you make it work. Yeah, exactly. But uh, with that being said, uh, I guess we can roll this old to the Royal Rumble. We don't have to take any breaks. Please, we keep this day rolling downhill, and we'll deal with the break later. Um. So Royal Rumble, Keish. What what did you think? What? Um. Okay, so I have stated this before, and I will reiterate. Um, I didn't watch the pre-show. I should have. I should have, and I hate to say it, but this was one time that I missed it, and I I hate it. I missed it, but I wasn't even at home, so I can't. <laughs> so I can't fault myself for that one. I wasn't even here. Um, I definitely was pleased with everything until we got to the Royal Rumble because there were certain things that pissed me off and then of course there was the ending itself I wasn't mad at the ending don't get me wrong I'm not going to sit here and be one of the people that was like oh the ending sucked it was awful it wasn't that it was just it, I have to honestly say this Royal Rumble did not go the Royal Rumble match itself did not go the way that I thought it would and that's the thing that upset me it kind of was disappointing but everything else was like absolutely awesome I actually gave the Royal Rumble this year like a good B um probably pretty much at the lowest grade it'd be a B minus um at the highest it was a B like I didn't I didn't go any further than that and that's because of the match itself, like the Royal Rumble match itself. Um, I thought it could have been a little bit better planning into that. I really seriously have to wonder what the hell happened. Um, there's things that happened that I just, I, we're going to get to like, uh, I'm definitely going to get into like the entries that I thought shouldn't have been there and like the ones that I thought were greatness and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, um, all the other matches that happened were great. I wish that there would have been more SmackDown matches as opposed to there being a majority Raw matches. Yes. Um, what SmackDown I, I match? The whole show. Right. I definitely think that, um, like, the six-woman tag match, I think, could have been broken up, you know? Yeah. Um did they even have that? They had that on a pre-show, right? Yeah, that was a pre-show match. Uh, no, the, okay, the, yeah. The Cena uh, H A match was the only main Ross main card match, but uh, right. I think they. I personally, I thought that what should have happened was they should have took that six woman tag. That shouldn't have happened. They should have had uh, Alexa Bliss defend her title, and that could have been another SmackDown match. Because at least you would have had both women title matches and both uh, male, but both men's matches happening. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's one thing that you didn't have the uh, Raw tag team titles on the main show, but you didn't have American Alpha wasn't involved at all. Like, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, seriously. Like, you didn't have the SmackDown Tag Team Champions involved at all. Like, I was just like, seriously? And then, and what's funny is I didn't even realize it until I had watched it again. And I was like, damn, like, they weren't a part of the show, period. Who does that? Um, it was awful. And I really seriously was against it, and I just didn't understand it. Because um, you had every other champion involved in some, at some point, in some way. And 
accept them and it was just like how like how do you even exclude them from the show like that I mean, they weren't even part of the pre-show it was like why so other than that um it was decent it was a very decent show and I had just um <clears throat> I, I actually kind of enjoyed watching it so that's my take on on Royal Rumble and as in, and in, in its entirety like I haven't even gotten into the like individual matches so but that's going to be another story okay well let's go into it uh, Nia Jax defeated Sasha Banks in the pre-show which yeah one of those things eh? didn't even realize that that could have been a pre-show match you know what I mean but right. uh yeah you go in you get that uh, I'm sorry, I got held up for a minute. Uh, the club, Anderson and Gallows are our new tag team champions for Raw, defeating Sheamus and Cesaro uh, in the pre-show with the two refs. Uh, let's see. Right. And of course, the SmackDown team—they won that six-woman tag, right? The, uh, the the baby faces Naomi, yeah. uh, Naomi, Becky Nikki, Lynch. and Becky Lynch. Yes, right. I almost forgot about them. Um, so Royal Rumble kicks off with Charlotte versus Bailey. Uh, I thought it was a very good match. I thought both ladies turned in amazing performances. Uh, Charlotte is a big match wrestler. Yeah, is that safe to say. Like the way she turns it up on a pay per view, she go mess around and be a baby face. She is. And it's gonna be one of those things where it's not like this total like distinctive turn. It's just gonna happen. Like she's literally just gonna roll right into it. And everybody's gonna be excited because Regardless of if you agree with her or not, the fact that matter is, she's awesome. Like, I, it's funny because there's times where I really just want to punch Charlotte in the throat when she talks. But, like, when it comes to her in the ring, like, she's greatness. And there's no denying that. I'm not going to take, I'll never take that away from her. Because she, she is one of the best women wrestlers I have seen recently. And, and that's been over time and like that woman can work <laughs> now Bailey is greatness too but Charlotte is like when it comes to these huge like main event style like um uh matches that she's been placed that she's placed in like there's no one that can compare you know her amp level is always on like 20 <laughs> and and like things like that she does to me aren't even shocking or surprising they're just like yes I kind of felt that coming like when she hit the natural selection on the apron like that to me is classic Charlotte that to me is what I'm used to seeing expecting like if she didn't do things like that it would be kind of to me the match would be lacking like seriously that's seriously just how I feel like them would seriously be lacking if she didn't do things like that um so um I'm not surprised at the win I really didn't want it to happen um cause I definitely wanted Bailey to see Bailey take that title from her but at the same time I'm really not really too disgusted with it you know it's not like I'm just so mad about it that it's like oh my god I can't stand it I'm not watching no more it's not that serious, but trust and believe, like, there is going to become a time when she drops the belt again. We're just going to wait and see when that is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it, I don't know if it's going to be at a pay-per-view anytime. Well, see, here's the thing, too. If she drops the belt at a pay-per-view, it has to be huge. Right. You know what I mean? Has to be huge. This is what it was where, like, if Asuka took her on for the belt, you know what I mean? 
Right. Did okay. Yeah. N- now, now we got it. Now we got something. But I, she can't lose to some poo butt, and I call it Bailey a poo butt. Or that, but I'm just saying, like she just can't lose to something that like she got to make somebody. If not, hey man, keep having them winning at these pay per views. Have her drop the belt on Raw and then get it back at the pay per view. But have her keep with it at the pay per view. Uh, right. But that natural selection to win the match. Ooh hoo! Keesh. Exactly. Oh, the ring apron? What? Okay. Yeah. Um, yo, they got these title matches about to pay quick. Uh, Kevin Owens defended his world title against his universal title against Roman Reigns. Uh, Jericho was in the shark cage. He did drop down some brass knuckles as befitting would believe. Uh, which, okay. I've always said John Cena could kick out of death. Right, right. But Roman Reigns survived the brass knuckle spot uh, from Owens and kicked out. Ooh, okay. But <laughs> need, need not worry. Uh, Braun Strowman came down and cleaned up the match and beat the hell out of Roman and Kevin Owens retain his title. It was a no DQ match. I'm not uh, gonna lie to you. I was so mad. I was so mad. I was pissed. I was like, man, what the fuck? I was mad. I was well, I was mad. I was as as people like to say these days, I was big mad. Like I was huge. I you was, were mad. Was, yeah. A I lot was, of people was that mad. crowd wasn't mad though. They was happy as hell. Like they was cheering. <laughs> Ooh, we like y'all mean man. I'm gonna tell y'all this: the WWE universe, y'all mean. That man Roman Reigns tries. Uh, now I I know I might have said some things earlier in the show, but I'm just saying the man tries. Y'all right. are mean as shit. They was like, yep, yeah, they don't care about. Do. They don't care about, about that. Time. Fuck that. Yeah, exactly. Power slam. <laughs> they don't give. He gets nothing. Like they don't. When I tell you, he don't get any part of of anything if that has anything to do with his dude. Like they're like, no, like fuck Roman. Like we're good. <laughs> yeah, like, like in the words of my dad, fuck him. You got any friends? Fuck them too. Like they, <laughs> that, that's how they treat Roman Reigns. Exactly. They're like Roman. No, yeah. bye. Like. Like, we don't want to see that shit. Like, mm mm. Y'all act like he hit y'all girl or some shit. Right. Exactly. Hell, not even like in the past, like currently. Y'all just hate that man. But, neither hit her. He lost. Uh, like I said, Broad came through. Uh, and you know what? I'm starting to like Broad. I, I didn't know what the future was going to be for Braun, but I, I think he's turned into a versatile kind of character. Big man, dangerous, but versatile. And he's getting better to read. I like the fact that he doesn't say much. Like, not because he can't talk or anything, but just because of the simple fact that all he has to do is say a few words and then he's done, you know? Like, he don't have to give a whole speech and paragraph and song and dance and all of that. And his character still evolves and seems strong and dominant and powerful. Not just because of his size and who he can throw around and who he can beat up, but because of the simple fact that a look in his face can tell you, like, I will kick your ass. <laughs> you know, um, it is definitely a lot to take in when you're dealing with someone like Bron because him saying too much or the wrong thing can definitely change an entire situation and for uh for somebody of his stature no um, um here's so thing. yeah I love the fact that he doesn't have to do all of that just for him to be who he is no um I don't. The way I work it with him is this: I don't think I don't know how good of a promo he is 
or not good at being a promo. But to your point, he doesn't have to be. And the way they're selling him now, they don't put him in a spot where we even have to. Like, he doesn't. That's not what we're buying from him. So I think it's a good job for them doing what they do. Um, Neville defeats Rich Swan for the Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, so we had a new cruiserweight champion. John Cena defeats AJ Styles to become the 16 time world champ. Um, Keish, I'm going to book this as my match of the night. Yeah. I had that listed as agree. possible after I saw it, and then I was like, nothing else is topping this. So, yeah. Match of the night. Um, very, very solid. Very talented. Um, both guys gave it all, Keish. I mean, whoo. I didn't think AJ was going to lose. I didn't either. I, I did didn't not either. think he was going to lose. I, I was either. watching it, and I'm like, oh, all right. And then he kicked out of the AA from the second rope, and I was like, well, damn, if he kicked out of that, that's it. Right, he is in there, exactly. right? Exactly. But but I thought I thought after the second Styles clash, like that was it. Yeah, you know, I was like, oh yeah, this is over. And then when Cena kicked out, I was like, God damn it! Yeah, I was like, oh yeah, I had to, I had to remember like this is Cena we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of too many false finishes. I think I think it's an overdone thing in wrestling. But man. Um, that that match was really really good. Um, AJ right. Styles is prime for prime time. Like that that should never be left out. But I give one John Cena credit. He you give Cena the right dance partner, he'll he'll give you a gem. Exactly. Like I I think that's very under underrated about him. Like I I I agree that he ain't always my first choice for stuff. But man, you give him the right dance partner, he will give you. He'll give he'll give you he'll give you gold. So and I mean AJ is an A one dance partner. Like I, do we not stretch anything there? Hey, he's one of the top tier guys to have. So it it all works out. Um, going down the line here, Royal Rumble match. So the match opens up with Big Cass and Jericho. They are your first two guys in the ring. Um, Big Cass lasts ten minutes. He gets taken out by Braun Strowman. Um, Jericho puts on one of the great Royal Rumble performances. Jericho might have the, some of the best Royal Rumble performances as a guy who's never won. Right. He has logged I well over four hours in a Rumble matches combined. Triple H had the record before this match, but Jericho ended up eclipsing that. Mind you, Jericho has never won. Triple H didn't won two of these things. Um, Jericho held, held it up, though. Um, just like when he came back a couple of years ago, when he, his first match back was the Rumble, was his surprise entrance, and he did 45 minutes. Right. Like Jericho can log some time. Um, the early match was about Braun Strowman. I mean, Braun probably eliminates the first. I'm trying to think. He eliminates, like, out of the first 11 guys, he eliminated like seven of them. If I'm looking at this correctly. Yeah, I mean, he eliminated yeah. seven of them out of that many guys, right? Right. Um, uh, significant times logged in this rumble. One hour, Chris Jericho. 47 minutes by Sami Zayn, who comes in at number eight and isn't taken out till later by The Undertaker. Um, Baron Corbin gave you 32 minutes. The Miz gave you 32 minutes. Now, right. very soon, I thought Baron Corbin had a really good coming out party. He threw out Braun Strowman, who by chance threw out like seven dudes. But he took out Braun Strowman. 
and that elimination alone, I think, was was huge for him. Um, he was taken out by the Undertaker, which I had tweeted like the Undertaker threw out his son, which I, <laughs> they not related, but man, could you imagine in the imaginary wrestling families if they so Boy and Corbin as Undertaker's son? Oh, that's a whole nother level of just like no, like. I wouldn't say it would be. I'm not saying that to be a bad thing, but like that's a whole. That's something I don't think I can handle. Like this, mm-mm. certain things that that have been introduced in the imaginary world of wrestling families has just been like, oh my god, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying it's going to be like a Vince McMahon Hornswoggle situation. I'm just saying it's it'll be a. Uh, uh, definitely something that has to be played out before I can make a decision on how it would happen. You know, how I actually would feel about it. So, but I can understand your point in it. Like, it's, oof. Could you imagine them, like, coming out together? Like, to, like, uh, no, not, not, Keith, now you got me started. picture it in my head they're coming out together to like Undertaker's music and you know and stuff like that strong presence I give it that it would be a horrifically strong presence in the ring so um um but like I said the Miz locked 32 minutes Keisha I whew, I didn't I, I did not call the Miz doing 32 minutes in this rumble Nope. Um, Dean Ambrose gave a solid 27 minutes um, The w- Goldberg uh, Looked dominant uh, Threw out a few people uh, Taker Logged a good amount of eliminations I think he logged about 3 or 4 uh, Brock Lesnar Looked very good and very dominant When he first got into that match uh, Brock only lasted 4 minutes and he was speared by Goldberg and tossed over by Goldberg under like two of those. Right. Right. So. Which I wasn't surprised at at all, actually. Um, no. The match in its entirety um, didn't do much for me. Mm. Uh. I definitely, I have to honestly say, I was 100% all in for Ty Dillinger coming in at the number 10 spot. Like, if you're going to have the perfect 10 debut in the Royal Rumble, that is where he needs to be. Like, yeah. there was no other spot for him. Like, had he had he came out to any other number, it would have been retarded. It wouldn't have worked. Oh, my God, I would have been done. I literally would have just turned it off. Like, nope, I'm not watching this anymore. But him coming in at number 10 was greatness. Now, I'm going to tell you what everyone was mad at, and I know you know this already because we've already talked about uh, We've already talked about it, but we haven't talked about it. Roman Reigns coming in at number 30. Like, I watched a whole five-minute reaction video, right, of different people reacting to him coming out at number 30 and no one was pleased. Like, everybody that I've seen in that reaction video was like every level of piss. I mean, just stupid piss. Like, they were like, what the fuck? I saw people throw things. I saw folks. Like, I mean, seriously, it was just mad. Right. And to me, it was an understandable uh, reason why. Because I I can't sit here and say that I totally agree with him coming in at number 30 either. I really was like, what the fuck? Like, it could have been anybody else, you know? Um, That's just how I feel. It could have been anybody else. Right. But but instead it was him. And it was just like, why? Yeah, I mean, and the crowd wasn't fucking with it. I mean... Them boos came Ooh. down hard, and I'm like, "Yeah, that's about par for the course for him." Right, exactly. And then he comes in and he eliminates the Undertaker, and then they have this stare down. What was that all about? Like, well, I think 
you have to um th- I think they have to set the table. Like I don't think they know what they'll do next, but they had to at least get the illusion of like, hey man, this ain't over. Right. This could go down. I told my boyfriend, I said, uh, don't be surprised if they have a match in the near future. And I mean, like, when I say near future, I mean more so of the next pay-per-view or WrestleMania. And he was like, "Are you? would you really seriously think that? Of course I would. It's the WWE. They'll do stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I mean, that's just me being honest. Well, Roman has a big enough name. And that's big enough to go into an Undertaker match and sell some tickets. I mean, because that's what it's about, right? Right. So, yeah, I mean, that stare down was, was big. Uh, but see, Taker took out Goldberg. You know what I mean? Right. So, I mean, it was like when you watched that, she was like, oh, wow, that could be something. Mm-hmm. But then Taker got taken out by Roman Reigns. Like I said, it was funny. Like, we got to 30, and it's like, well, who's coming at 30? When Roman music hit, it was like, oh, shit. Boo. Yeah, exactly. He was like, oh, what the fuck? Like, I mean, folks are pissed. I mean, they're not not mad. Like, not even a little mad. Like, they were pissed. They were like, no. I think people might have turned it off after that. Like, they were done. They was like, "That's, that's the wrong Samoan. Right. Yeah, I think people was afraid he might win that shit. Oh, they were they were keys. Especially when they got down to the bottom three. Yeah. And especially when they got to the last three and it was just him, Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. Right. I'm not gonna lie, Keith, I was like, Oh my god, please do not let Roman win this thing. And the only reason why was because I knew that this wasn't gonna go anywhere near level of where it should and I was just kind of like please don't tell me you did all this big name adding and all of that just so you could have Roman Reigns win the Royal Rumble like why you know what was the point what was the point in the build up and uh and skipping surprise entries which was another thing that pissed me off um and not having, to me, what, what I consider to be a traditional Royal Rumble just for Roman Reigns to win. Now, I'm not going to lie to you because, I mean, I said this in, in last week's show, but I didn't know who was going to win. I was completely unsure about who this was going to go to. But when Randy Orton won, it was like, shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because when I tell you, that went all the way left and that was something I was not expecting yeah I mean and you gotta ask like okay so what's next like who what do they do with Randy um right and him and John Cena cause I mean I don't know if anybody's on, on board for that I mean hell there was a match back in the day and they, they said they wasn't supposed to wrestle no more like right, they had the final battle. Exactly. So, uh, I right, don't know. we'll have to see though. We'll definitely have to see because this could this could go either way. This could go. This again could go completely left. We don't know. We don't know, but I guess time will tell what happens with Randy and what happens with this entire situation in general. Um, I just think it's very interesting. So, with that being said and done, we are going to take our break. We are going to be back. And on the other side, we are going to talk SmackDown. We'll talk news. We'll talk Raw. And that'll be it. So, um, thank you all that stuck through our our recap. And we'll be back on the other side. Um... Keish, you got anything for the people or you just uh, we'll see you after the break I mean we'll, we'll be here 
and uh, of course we're coming back. So please do not stop listening because that's definitely what's going to happen. All right. It's about my husband. And second, speaking of my husband, well, Triple H isn't here tonight. Oh, color me surprised, Steph. Well, if Triple H isn't here tonight, then I got to be honest, I really don't care about you. So I care about your coward of a husband, and I'd like to know if you could tell me when are you going to let him off his leash? You're right about one thing. Triple H is afraid. He's afraid of what he might do to you. He's afraid that you're going to bring out that dark side of him that he tries so hard to keep hidden. And he's afraid that he will destroy what he at one time thought was his greatest creation. And besides, the truth is, I asked him to stay away. <laughs> well, if, if you expect me and all these good people here to believe that, then you are far more delusional than you look. I'm delusional? Yeah, you're crazy. I I'm delusional, I'm crazy. Okay, let's, let's paint a picture here, Seth. So, at one point in time, you were with the authority, you were riding high, you were the WWE champion, and then you decided to turn your back on us. You became a traitor, and, and what happened? When's the last time you've seen championship gold? What was that, money in the bank? Oh, and who had to sit out and watch WrestleMania because he was injured last year and who because of his actions at NXT on Saturday night was banned from the Royal Rumble. Who's that, Seth? Oh yeah, that's right, that's you. So who's delusional? As a matter of fact, Seth, you shouldn't be out here calling out my husband. You should be begging us both for forgiveness. You want me to apologize yes, to you? Yes, I do. To your husband? You, you want me to apologize to these people? You know what, as a matter of fact, they don't deserve an apology, but I do. She is the boss, so Steph, look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that over the last two months, I've exposed your husband for the gutless snake that he really is. I called him out, what did he do? He had security do his dirty work. And who is that? Who is that guy that stood out there in that suit? That, that is not Triple H. That is not the game. That is not the cerebral assassin. That's a scared dude is what that is. And if you think going to NXT was bad for business, what happens when I show up at WWE headquarters, huh? What happens when I invade the next board of directors meeting? How the suit and ties in New York gonna like that? How's your father gonna feel about that? Man, that Stephanie McMahon Seth Rollins conversation was deep. It was. It was um, extra deep. Hey man, I got personal. I thought Rollins may went a little far. Talk about look, man, I'm knocking on your door, and your kids gonna answer. I'm like, oh shit. No, I thought it was greatness. That was hey. perfect. Say to me. I ain't gonna be wrestling. This will be you gonna be wrestling a pistol. <laughs> you stupid. And I ain't wrestling a pistol. It's the bullet that's gonna come out of it that you're gonna be wrestling. <laughs> but <laughs> hey man, ain't here for the shenanigans. Right, exactly. Um, before we get into wrestling birthdays, hey, the celebrity clapback game is real. Right. Don't come for these celebrities on this social media. They will get at you. Oh no, they'll cut your throat. Like immediately. And won't think twice about it. They are trying to be nice before this Trump shit. They ain't having No, they really not. You They're see what the dude came for JK Rowling talking about he gonna burn the movies in the books. And she said, Look, bruh, I already got money for those. You already paid for them. I'm good. She said also the, <laughs> right. the fumes from the DVD is, are, are toxic. So uh, you can borrow my lighter. I said, damn. Did she just tell me to kill herself? Mm-hmm. Then Wesley Snipes said something. Then one dude told him to pay his taxes. 
Wesley told him he can get these hands tax free. I seen that. I actually read at the mom. She started laughing. She was dying. Sure. Like I was sitting here like, dude. But you know what? Uh, they let you know. They let you know, man. Y'all not finna be one around here talking about me, talking to me any kind of way. Right. I'm the hell y'all thought. Just because I got money don't mean I won't bust your ass, got <laughs> Right. Like, and if I don't bust your ass with these hands, I'm definitely going to do it with these words. Y'all better leave me the fuck alone. I'm with it. Hell, I am all up in four of these plans. Because I'm telling you, people go, man, I, I keep saying this, that. I guess that's been my theme of the week because I've been saying this all week. People, gonna leave, people are going to learn to leave folks alone. Like, y'all need to just quit fucking with people. Cause yeah. you don't know who you who you doing it to. You don't know these folks like you think you do, and you definitely don't. I don't know if I got time for that. They just don't. People are tired. They're done. They're like, oh, bye. You know, and they'll tell you in a quickness, like, no. Mm mm. So we're here. It's birthday time. Um, there was no real birthdays for the first part of February, but hey, today February third, when a lot of y'all will get this show, um, we're live right now on Groundhog Day, but it's February third is the day after, which means the birthday of one half of the Rockers, Marty Janetti. Marty turns fifty seven. Uh the late great Kerry Von Eric, the Texas Tornado, would have been fifty seven tomorrow. On February third, uh, on February fourth, uh, one Chris Saban, one half of the Motor City Machine Guns, Saban turns thirty-five. Um, and on Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, Madison Rain turns thirty-one. So that is it for the birthdays. Let's get on to the news because I like the news. I uh, do, but I right. get real apprehensive and anxious about it. Yeah, Just um, saying. today is light. Nobody died. Um, well, Lucha, thank God. Like, but what's cracking? Lucha Underground is coming to Netflix. Ooh. Debut on February fifteenth. Like Netflix will be carrying Lucha Underground, which I was assuming they probably had the whole first two seasons. But yeah, Lucha Underground will come to Netflix. So if you have never watched Lucha Underground or you want to get caught up on Lucha Underground, you will go to the Nets of the Flicks and uh, start streaming. So. All, all I know is um, I'm excited to see because I was watching the uh, inaugural season of Lucha on the ground so I am thoroughly excited for there to be on there on uh, Netflix season because I'm going to end up binge watching that just like I've been binge watching Total Divas oh that's something I'm going to get into I'm going to get off subject real quick we're going to get back to the news. But I just want to say that if I couldn't stand Summer Rae, like, watching Total Divas from where I'm at right now makes me want to strangle her. Like, I seriously hate that woman. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, my God, she is the worst person ever. Like, period. She sucks in the ring. She sucks as a person in, like, real life. Like, I just can't. I can't deal with her. Like, I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, you make me every level sick. But other than that, I think it's a good show. I mean, it's definitely a, a great show to watch. Right. So, but that's just me right now. Um, I'm a. We're gonna go. Go go ahead, Keith. Go, you can get back to this. Um, the WWE hosts an emergency WrestleMania meeting. Uh, to discuss what to do if Seth Rollins cannot go against Triple H. Uh, you know the original pr- program was to have Samoa Joe to make debut on SmackDown with John Cena, but they changed their mind. Wow. Uh, but Joe could still go <laughs> over to SmackDown and work a program right. with Cena. Um, they don't really know yet, and uh, uh, or they could keep Joe and Raw build him up to a WrestleMania match with Triple H, but I don't think they're gonna do that. Mm-mm. So. Like I said, it's all it's all crazy. 
But yeah, there, there, the brush there. Um, on the Seth Rollins injury update, he is injured, but they think it may just be a torn MCL and not an ACL. And if it's just an MCL, there's a very vague possibility he could be back in eight weeks. That that's really cutting it close to WrestleMania, right? You know, be assuming that like. Four weeks now, you get to March, and then March, and then April. Like, there's a maybe the closet have been out. I don't know. Mm mm. I don't either, but I know that, um, <laughs> I just, I don't know. I don't even know what to really say. Like, it's. Yeah. Um,. <laughs> Kevin Owens is going to wrestle Brock Lesnar at a WWE live event in Madison Square Garden. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, like, I don't know. It's announced for WWE live at Madison Square Garden. Now, I don't know if this is going to air on the WWE Network or not, but it's slated for March 13th. Um, the card right. has Lesnar and... Owens for the Universal title um, Cena versus Bray Wyatt for the WWE Championship Randy Orton will take on Luke Harper Dean Ambrose will defend the IC title uh, so you got an interesting mix going on there right solid card yeah you you use the right word for that okay. you definitely use the right word for that I'm telling you um. So, Kevin Owens and uh, Chris Jericho open up Raw as usual. They talk they stuff. Right. Then Braun Strowman came down, Keish, and Braun said he was a promise a title match. It had video proof. Really? Yeah, and Mick Foley gave him a title match later on that night. So that's going down. It was going down on Raw. That uh, Raw was going to wrestle Kevin Owens one on one for the title on Raw. We'll tell you how that goes later in the show. But all in all, Keish, how did you like the Raw after the pay per view? Okay, so the Raw after the pay per view was it was impressive, but it wasn't like spectacular. You know, it could have been a little bit more to make it uh, a lot better. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, it wasn't, like, horrific. So that's definitely something that I can say about it. It wasn't, like, it was, like, the worst thing ever. I think it was just, it just could have been a little bit more to it. Uh, I don't know what was really missing. It was just kind of like, okay, um, it was decent, but it wasn't, like, uh, the best thing ever. It wasn't. I wasn't really too in thrill with it, but at the same time, you know, well, I know I'm just a fan, so it is what it is. But I wasn't like too mad about it. So yeah, here's that's the thing. Not where it starts and stops for me. Yeah, I thought it was a good show. Um, generally, and most recently. The Raw after the pay-per-view has been the most excellent show that they've had. Um, I thought it was good. I thought they had a lot of surprises. I thought they everybody held their own. Um, but from what I got from it, uh, it was entertaining to see Samoa Joe. But uh, mm-hmm. I'll go out of the card. Um uh, Sami Zayn uh, defeated Chris Jericho in a non-title match for the U. And uh, I guess it's going to elevate Sami where he'll be able to challenge Jericho eventually for the U.S. title. But I understand why he didn't challenge the first night. I was like, hey, man, that guy is worthy of having a shot right away. I don't know. I just. I don't know, man. I don't know, Keith. Like that happened. Uh, Tony Nice defeated Mustafa Ali. Uh, as a clip we played earlier uh, on the break, Stephanie McMahon and Seth Rollins had some choice words for each other. Uh, it got kind of personal. Of 
Uh, you did. Seth really, really, really wants to fight Triple H. And I, I think this it's going <sighs> to... That was set for WrestleMania. But uh, things change. Uh, Rich Swan crashes Devil's WWE uh, Cruiserweight title coronation. Also, rumor mill. The Cruiserweights could be coming off Raw Keys. I don't know if they feel like 205 Live is strong enough on its own, but they are thinking about taking the Cruiserweights off of Raw. Uh, I, I don't know how to really even respond to that to tell yeah. the truth uh, I don't because I mean why would you change it you know other than putting them on Smackdown so they're closer to 205 Live I don't see the point well see I thought when they decided to do 205 Live that they were they were gonna go to Smackdown that's why they had that stipulation in the pay-per-view because um you would want to um, make that work, right? Right. Because just logistically, hey, those guys should be. I mean, because they got to go to SmackDown anyway, right? Right. And the show exactly. comes on right after SmackDown, and it's it's that the SmackDown venue. So why not just have an old have a old SmackDown? And it's just kind of like mixing them into the show. Yeah, that's something that I never really could fully comprehend once they created 205 Live. It was like, okay, so what are you exactly going to do with the Cruiserweights? Because they have, they now they're on two separate shows, they come on two separate nights, it just doesn't make sense. It's just because of the simple fact that that they're, their main show comes on after SmackDown does. So it's like, okay, well, then just have them on SmackDown. Hell, that way you wouldn't have to worry about right. placement and thoughts and feelings and shit. Like, it'd just be, you know, it'll, it'll roll out the way that it's supposed to. I don't know. Right. I guess that's, that's just wishful thinking, isn't it? <laughs> um, at this point. We'll see how that goes. I don't know. I don't even know how to feel about that right now. It's just kind of like, will people just seriously listen to others? No, <sighs> no, no, no. Uh, okay. Um. So, uh, Bailey and Cesaro and Sheamus defeat Charlotte in the club in a mixed tag match. No, I already covered that. Uh. Braun Strowman defeats Kevin Owens via disqualification in their Universal Title match as Roman Reigns shows up and wrecks shop. Yeah, that's right. Which he should have. Yeah, that is right. Mm-hmm. I don't blame him. Is but nope. I'll say this: they were having a pretty good match before that interruption. They really were. And Kevin it Owens was, was like awesome. he was trying to find his way. Like he got the big man off his feet, he was gonna go for that splash. Like he, he, he was, he was figuring it out. To me, he wasn't too far off, and it showed his strength as a champion. Right. Um, cause I mean, when you got to face a dude that just that just slammed your your best friend through a table, like <laughs> through an announce table at that, like you gotta have some level of of strength to get through all of that so I mean yeah I thought Kevin Owens was doing an excellent job against Braun Strowman I thought that the match was flowing perfectly the, the way that it should before the, you know, uh, the uh, interference but you know I we knew it was coming like we, we both can't sit here and act like we didn't see that coming we saw that coming no. That's why it wasn't a shock or surprise. It was just more so uh really? Oh really? Oh, okay. So but we'll see. I mean who knows? Yep. So that happened. Um Nia Jax defeated Sasha Banks uh via Matt Stoppage. Basically she beat the hell out of her. Um, 
Enzo and Big Cass defeat Russo and Jinder Mahal in a tornado tag match. <laughs> tornado tag match. Which I, I like tornado tags and I think there should be more of them. Especially at pay per views and there's a no DQ. Like if you got a no DQ tag match, it needs to be tornado. Like right. why waste time having people go and try to tag in and out like they're not going to freaking do it. There's no DQ. And All right. There's no DQ. Why are you trying to create, a, enforce a rule structure? Exactly. Like you can't. There's no way. And what what the what the ref going to do? Disqualify you? There is none. Like, like what's the point? What is the point? What right. really is the point? So I never understood that either, Keith. I seriously haven't. I never got that. Right. But um whatever. Samoa Joe uh, attacks uh, Seth Rollins came down to the ring thought he was about to fight Triple H Triple H is in the ring Triple H talking that schmicker and out of nowhere some more Joe comes Keish and right. first time beat though know, Seth Rollins right uh, right maybe. <laughs> yeah like I mean, he's completely destroyed Seth Rollins. I'm not even going to sit here and sugarcoat it. Mm. Like that was brutal, man. Like I was like, yeah, like, like it's part of you really is torn because part of you wants to be like, no, don't do Seth like that. That's horrible. But then the mm. other, the majority of it is more like, yeah, kick his ass. Yeah, go do. Like I don't know. It's, it's mixed feelings, but at the same yeah. time, it's a good mix of mix of mix. If I smash like the chick and got caught, my girl said, "Go, Joe!" Oh my god, I don't know how funny that would be. You but, stupid key. I'm not dealing with you. I'm really not. Like you're retarded. <laughs> you are retarded. Like I can't deal. It's like, I think it's past your bedtime, Keith. Just go. Just go to bed. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We will we'll see you next week. Good night. Like I just <laughs> I'm not even gonna, <laughs> I'm not dealing with you. I swear I'm not. Hey man. <laughs> I I'll be here. I'm functional. Of course you are. You are. For now. Like for okay. right now. Um, I'm done with you for the night, but you know, I know everybody else ain't, so. Alright. We'll continue this. Okay, one thing I want to say, just before we, we shut this thing down. And we'll go a brief overview of SmackDown. But, um, Samoa Joe. Is he a little dangerous, Keish? Yeah. Yes, he is. I mean, cause um, this ain't the first person that's been injured. And I mean, I know stuff happens. You know what I mean? But, and it's kind of ironic that I'm pulling it together with Seth Rollins because we had these questions about Seth Rollins too, right? Right. Is it, it, uh, it goes along the same lines. Yeah. It really does. Uh, I think what it is is, and maybe I've been watching too much Total Divas breaking breaking ground, you know, just, I don't know. All I know is, what I think it boils down to is a miscommunication in placement or just the simple fact of, I think I got it and I know what I'm doing. And it's more like, no, the hell you don't. <laughs> like, like, what the fuck? But at the same time, stuff happens. You're right. Like, things happen that are completely out of control of both wrestlers to where one of them ends up getting injured. And there's really nothing that can really be done about that too much. But, uh, and I think, personally, I think this might be just be one of those situations where I don't think Samoa Joe, of course, was trying to hurt Seth. I think it just happened. Um, well, well, here's the thing. Like, I don't ever want to cast any dispersions on any wrestler. I do not want to say that I think somebody was trying to hurt somebody. Right. But I think some people tend to be a little more reckless than others. And that and that level of recklessness 
will definitely get somebody hurt every time. Especially okay. when they kind of just dismiss it as, uh, well, you know, I did what I was supposed to do. And it's just kind of like, so is that all you're going to, that's really just what you're going to say? Like, is that all that you're going to give for that? Because if that's the case, then I feel like you just have no, you really just have no kind of like, remorse or sympathy for any part of what you what happened right. and even if it's not your fault or not the simple fact of uh well i i will i will say this and i do give samoa joe this much um he definitely kept playing a part after the fact um i don't know if you've seen his tweet to triple h that said um i have done as you have requested and uh, it was something along those lines. And I was right. like, ooh, you know, like, part of you is like, damn, you know. Right. But at the same time, um, I, I liked how he decided to play this off of an injury and, like, keep him moving, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I feel like to be a great wrestler and a great entertainer in itself, that's the kind of shit you have to do. And in this in this industry, that is definitely what gets you ahead. So it's just kind of like, all right, you know. But I personally am excited about what is to come for Samoa Joe, mm-hmm. and what is to happen with him in this in this time that's about to pass in the recent in the next like three months or so. Um, it's definitely going to be something worth seeing. And I don't know what's going to happen from here on out, especially with Seth's injury, but it's definitely going to be um, an interesting development. Yeah. I mean, here's <laughs> to the thing. say the least. I feel bad for Joe in a sense that this was supposed to be a pretty big spot for him. Right. And you know what I mean? how it ends, like, it's, that has to suck. That has to suck. And I mean, I'm sure they're going to put him in a good program, but I don't know where that program is and who it's with now. You know what I mean? And that's where the scramble right. comes in. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, Finn Baylor had a sit back in his uh, rehab. They don't think he'll be ready till March. So March? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, and I, ideally, a lot of people thought he was going to be back here at Royal Rumble, but yeah, uh, Andrew sort of said he probably won't be ready till March. So that's off the table because I, I could easily see him sliding into the mix. You know what I mean? And then you got a big baby face return with with a heel debuting, and it, I mean, it'd be there'd be a lot going on, but I could see that working. Um. So, but here's the thing: we got two pay per views in between time, right? Uh, next week we'll be previewing Elimination Chamber for the SmackDown group, and John Cena got to defend that title against four other people. We got Fastlane coming up for Raw, probably a couple of weeks right. after that. So. Uh-huh. That's enough time for storylines to move and change and for these belts to move around. And really, So it's kind of funny. WrestleMania used to be pretty much set after Royal Rumble. And then you just had to pick and choose how the feuds were going to lay out after that. But a lot can happen in the next month that can change how this is going to look. So the things as his book right now I wouldn't necessarily bank on like right now you got the Wyatt family who confronted Cena on Smackdown and that's gonna be an interesting dynamic because you got Bray who's gonna try to get into the chamber but Randy got the Royal Rumble match what happened if Bray wins the belt at the chamber Keish <sighs> um, I don't know if I'm ready for that Keish I have to honestly say I don't know if I can take all that in. I mean, I really just seriously. I I for don't was, know how to really digest that. Yeah, you know? I was one that was very critical of Randy Jordan the Wyatt family, but if this if that's the end game, boom. You know what I mean? Because here's the thing: with all of this, 
to me is worth it if you could elevate Bray Wyatt to the next level, right? Because I think they've mm-hmm. hit and miss with that so much over the years. Like, I think they've had gold and just walked right by it. Uh, I like the Luke Harper element of it. Uh, when he showed up in the ring when they was about to bum rush him and he was on Cena's side, I was like, huh, oh, oh, wow, that's different. Um, I've heard rumors that Goldberg still might win the title at Fastlane. So I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I heard rumors. I didn't say it was happening. I heard rumors, which that would give us. I mean, Brock and Goldberg. That part three. That's probably going to happen at WrestleMania. Could be for the Universal Title. Um. So a lot, a lot's going on, Keish. Um. You I, you got to get AJ Styles back in the mix. Like, as much as him beat Dean Ambrose or The Miz or try to get that uh, IC title, I got to keep him in that world title motion. Like, that was I don't dude, know. That's the 2016 MVP. I can't, I can't shit on him. Right. Like right? Exactly. Um, I really don't know how to... To tell the truth, I don't know how to play all this stuff out. Um, it's really difficult for me to place... Because uh, it's, it's not like they're at a shortage of of, of um, incredible wrestlers, you know? So it's hard for me to place people in different places, but they got the right idea, Keith. I mean, I give them that. No, no. So... They got the right idea. Oh, oh, let me throw in something that's really kind of random but kind of not. So, how 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 much have we been talking about Naomi and her getting a title shot? Not much, but let's go ahead and go right into it. Because, I mean, they have positioned her, and she's looked good in the matches that they've had. Now, mind you, they tag matches, but this is how they set it up. Now, this I don't mind. I don't mind. When somebody beats the champ in a tag match, and that's how you set them up for the for the singles match, right? Like right. they had a tag match. Even though I still don't like overexposure, and I'm always fearful of that. You know what I mean? But I don't mind if you use a tag match to where somebody beats the champ, and it's like, oh, I didn't know you could beat the champ. Oh man. Y'all end up in another right. tag match with the champion. You pin the champ again. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. All right. Well, you know what? Maybe you should try and get this person. You know what I mean? In a one on one. Um. <clears throat> thanks to watching Talking Smack, and I got to make sure we watch this again to understand what I heard. But she will have her chance against Alexa Bliss. Right. And. I personally am excited about this. Now, what I predict might happen, and I'll hate it if it does, is that, of course, Alexa Bliss retains the title and they don't give Naomi the belt, which I would seriously hate. Because I'm like, don't build her up just to put her down. Like, I hate that. I can't stand that. And to me, Naomi deserves it. Like, she does. They only work her ass off. She was on her way more than a few times and then the rug kind of got pulled. But... Exactly. I I, so. I I'm more liable with what you, you said in the beginning. I think they're gonna play her. Like this is was right. nice, but now it's gonna be like, hey. And I hate that. You know, I hate to even have that conversation because I hate the even the thought of it. You know, like but I just have that feeling. I have that feeling. That they gonna curve, you know? They gonna curve and they gonna like they gonna swerve to the left on her. It's gonna be like, man, are you for real? You know, I I seriously just I don't even want to see it happen. But I seriously, I seriously would love to see her with that title around her waist, like for real, for real. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens with her and uh, you know when that comes, but. Oh man, I hate. It. I would hate it if they did that to her. Like I seriously would. Um, 
but I'm I'm pleased with actually you know what I have to say Smackdown live as a whole like I am very pleased I'm very pleased um they got some good stuff going on over there you know like yeah I have to say I don't I, I haven't been disappointed in like the past good few weeks or so um there have been things that have made me like are you serious but other than that like um I I love I still and I'm gonna keep repeating this I still love the direction they're taking with Dolph Ziggler and I like the fact that we're seeing Apollo Crews yeah. face more I mean even if he's not wrestling um I, I do love the fact that he's being utilized more even if it's for brief spots here and there like I I'm yeah, here's the thing. I'm the I, improvement. Yeah. I've heard people say that they felt like Apollo Cruz was a victim of the brand extension. Cause they needed to have talent but they didn't he got lost in the shuffle. And I don't know if he's a victim of the brand extension because honestly I felt like he was getting a little lost out of NXT. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um I don't I don't think it has anything to do with the brand extension. I think it's just him. Like, I'm not saying he's a horrible wrestler or anything, because I think he's incredible in the ring. But well, you know how I there's just, wrestlers that just have that thing that's just missing? Right. Like, that's Apollo Crews to me. Like, it's something that's just missing, you know? Like, I don't know what it is and why it's not all the way there, but it's just not. Well, here's the thing. I think he's talented. I think he has a move set that's kind of weird because his body type doesn't match his move set, per se. Uh, I think creative isn't that great with figuring out what to do with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And until they can figure that out, they're just he just kind of getting lost in the shuffle. Mm, it's going to take a while. Well, no, I can't say that because I thought that when he was in NXT and when he got bumped up, I was like, okay, well, maybe he'll show some promise and it'll change. Everything will change for him. But it really hasn't. Right. It really hasn't. And I'm not going to sit here and say, like, he's totally at fault because, of course, I don't. I wouldn't even agree with that. But... It's just he. I don't know what it is about him, man. Like yeah. it's like oh, you I know mean, when not, he when you get to when you get to the ring, I think he's incredible. But when you're like just outside of that, it's just kind of like uh, I don't fault him. Uh, I mean, I, I'm wrong. I think his promo can use to work, but I don't necessarily fault him as much as I fault the positioning. And I don't really fault them as much as the positioning. I just think it's like you got a lot of guys, you got a lot of stories. You know what I mean? But Hopefully the Ziggler thing works out for both of them. Right, exactly. But it gotta work because oh. Ziggler. Ah, I mean, I know people try to see the blues, and I think the heel thing is a good angle for him. But like, like I said, hopefully it's it's a good thing for both of their careers. Right. Um, with that, I think we just covered everything. Uh, you got anything else, Keith? Sure. Actually, I think I'm good. Um, I thought that I, I was very pleased with wrestling this week, Keith. I was excited about everything. Um, I, I actually was uh, very, very intrigued by all of it. Like it was, it was. Uh, but I have to honestly say, if there's one thing that WWE did this week that I give them all kinds of a standing ovation for mm-hmm. and that's um they have me asking a lot of questions about what's coming next right. and i think that's what was that that should always be the intention of pay-per-views and the shows after because if you're not asking questions about what's coming next you're no longer interested and when you're no longer interested you just don't watch right. so 
I'm definitely looking forward to see what's coming next and how this all plays out, especially with the injury of Seth Rollins and Nakamura losing the title and, like, AJ Styles losing the title and, like, uh, the uh, Gallows and Anderson finally being the tag team champions and, like, Naomi being a power play, doing, like, the biggest power play within the women's division on SmackDown. And, like, I, I, it, I ask so many questions in my head right now. It's ridiculous. And I'm going to two in it every week just so that I can see what happens next because you don't have a choice. Unless you uh, just want to be clueless, you have to watch because you just, there's no other way. There's no other way right. for you to really know what's going on. So I, I think I'm going to leave it at that because mm-hmm. um, I seriously can't wait to see what happens. Uh, next Monday and Tuesday night. Wednesday too. Wednesday too. I'm not going to count NXT out of this because um, I watch that every week also. Because of course, if you don't watch NXT every week, how are you going to know what's going on? Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I'm definitely excited about what's to come next. So, okay. Um, with that being said, um, we're going to wrap this thing up. It is, uh, like I said, Black History Month. And like I said, we are, I got an article coming out on the website, but I'm just going to give you a quick overview about the legendary Sputnik Monroe. Uh, Sputnik, who I sold in the 1950s and 60s in the Memphis Territory, was a star heel. But um, he became a babyface to black folks in the Memphis area. Uh, Monroe uh, would go down to the black community and go kick it at the black bars and had drinks with the black folks and would hand out tickets to the show. Um, he would shout out to black people and, you know, they would, what they called the crow's nest, which is racist. And you can understand why they would call it the crow's nest because as you understand racism. Uh, but he would give a shout out to him, raise his hand. Uh, one day he was arrested for hanging out in the black bar for a weird charge called bopery. Uh, if you look what? up bopery, it's a very vague charge. Uh, somebody got charged for mopering for loitering while he was walking. Yes, he was walking and got charged for loitering. Um, they threw it on a mopering. Uh, mopery. Um, this is how they enforce racist laws back in the day, right? Yeah. yeah. So Monroe went down, paid his fine, and he hired a black attorney, which was unheard of in those days, to represent him uh, in this case. And he got cited for it a few times. And they end up desegregating. Um, at the wrestling shows, he uh, would demand that he wouldn't perform or he wouldn't do the show unless his people could come down and watch the show like everybody else. And eventually he desegregated Memphis Wrestling and a lot of parts of Memphis. Um, this was real big. Uh, he started in 1959. He even got the nickname Sputnik and it kind of stuck because... Uh, the legend has it in 1957 he was on a road trip in Alabama and he got tired right so he pulled over to the gas station and there was this black dude hitchhiking he said hey man why don't you just drive and I'm gonna go to this town and I'm gonna fall asleep while you drive black dude drove him to the town he woke up he hit the arena and walking out the car he put his arm around the black dude and everybody looked at him like he was crazy because why are you hugging this black dude in 1957 Alabama right but he did it exactly and an old lady told him he was nothing but a Sputnik which is supposed to be an insult because it's named after the Russian satellite that went up in 1955 so you know that, that that's a thing right but um, you know all these years later uh, the man who helped you know, desegregate Memphis is seen as a hero. Everybody thinks he's a hero now. Now, imagine, remember I said he was a heel? Yeah. Um, fighting segregation uh, made him a baby face with black people. A lot of the white people in Memphis right. made him a bigger heel. Hated him even more. <laughs> right. They couldn't stand his ass. Yeah. So, that's where I can see it, that. Yeah. That's how it still happens. 
so I just want to let you know, keep your parents over here talking. I don't know what they're talking about. Okay. They well, are way wide awake right now. I need them to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. I need them to go to bed. Yeah. Like, all right, I'm done talking. Everybody stop talking. We all go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm going to let everybody go to bed. Uh, Keish, I appreciate you. You have been an integral part, kept this thing rolling, and I got you going to bed before one o'clock in the morning. So, hey, Keith, uh, I love this. I love doing this every week. Trust and believe. Uh, tonight, I, you know, I think I found my niche on how to how to keep it together. So, I think we're gonna be. I think we're gonna be all right, Keith. I think we're gonna be all right. Well, starting so starting on time helps a lot. Um, of course. <laughs> I'll, I'll do better uh, <laughs> But yo We appreciate it Y'all come back next week We will preview Elimination Chamber And with that <laughs> We are out Peace Bye Yes